In this video, I'm going to go over the different types of wound drainage, also known as exudate. So let's get started. As the nurse, you want to be able to identify the different types of wound drainage because this drainage tells you a lot about your patient's wound. Like, is it healing properly or is there maybe an infection going on? So when you're looking at this wound drainage, you want to be paying attention to a couple things. Number one, it's color. Is this the color you expect this wound drainage to be at this particular stage in our wound? healing process. Also look at its consistency. Is it thin and watery or is it thick? And it's amount. Is this the amount that we expect it to be or is it increasing over time? Which in some cases could be a bad thing. And you want to pay attention to if there is an odor present with this drainage. First up is serous drainage. So this type of drainage is going to be clear and a very, very pale yellow color. Now the reason for its consistency in color is because it's actually just made up of blood plasma that's low in proteins. And we expect this type of drainage after a recent injury or surgery because it's part of the inflammatory phase of the wound healing process. And this type of drainage is actually beneficial for wound healing because as this serous fluid is flowing through the wound, it's going to help keep the wound clean by removing old cells or foreign matter. Plus it's gonna keep that wound bed moist so we can promote healing. Therefore, as a nurse, you wanna make sure that this drainage is appearing the way it should. So it should be clear and a very, very pale yellow color. It should be thin and watery, not thick. It should not have an odor. If it has an odor, think infection. And you wanna make sure it's not putting out too much serous drainage. We really just want small amounts and these amounts are actually gonna decrease over time as this wound is healing. If you notice that it's putting out a lot of serous drainage, that could be a red flag and you need to further investigate it because it could mean that the patient has an infection. Next up is sanguineous drainage. This type of drainage is red and it mainly consists of blood, hence why it's the red color. And this type of drainage is totally expected whenever a patient has a recent injury to, let's say, their blood vessel. Because blood vessels, what do they carry? Blood. So whenever you cut into one of them or damage, it's just going to spill its contents out and that sanguineous drainage is just going to flow out. So we expect this early on, but as time goes on, things should start to clot off, repair themselves, and we should not have this type of drainage. Now, in the beginning phases, it's actually beneficial because it's going to keep that wound bed nice and moist. Plus, it's going to signal to your body, hence your immune system, that something's wrong because you're spilling out blood. So it's going to send immune cells to go in there and prevent infection and promote healing. Therefore, as a nurse, you should know that in the early stages of this type of drainage is going to be that bright red color, it's going to be thin and watery, and it can have a coppery, bloody smell to it. But as time goes on, the amounts that this wound's putting out of this sanguineous drainage should actually start to decrease. The color will darken and it'll thicken up. Let us know that it's clotting off. Now, it's completely abnormal if this drainage is actually increasing. That is not a good thing. It could indicate we have uncontrolled bleeding. Our patient could hemorrhage. Maybe that blood vessel really hasn't repaired itself, so we need to go in surgically and repair it. Or they may even have a clotting problem. So take a peek at their medication history. Are they on anticoagulants? Have you had any recent labs on their coag? See where they are at. Also, if they've had a change in odor of this, it has a foul odor, or there's a change in color. That could tell us that we have an infection or that wound is not healing like it needs to. Next up is serosanguineous. So this drainage is actually a combination of the two we just went over. So it's a combination of serous drainage and sanguineous drainage. So when you take serum and mix it with some blood, you get light pink thin watery drainage. And this type of drainage, we expect it during the early phases of wound healing like the inflammatory phase. And as a nurse, you wanna make sure that this drainage is looking the way it should. So it should be thin, light pink, it should not have an odor, and it should be in small amounts. And these amounts are actually gonna decrease in time and it will actually lighten up in color as that wound begins to heal. So it would be abnormal if you're seeing large amounts of this drainage or there's a change in its color or it develops an odor. This tells you this wound is not healing properly and there could be an infection. And speaking of infection, that leads me to our next type of wound drainage, which is purulent. 
And this is a thick pus-like drainage that can be a variety of colors. It can be brown, yellow, green, whatever the color, it's not good. And it's usually going to have a foul odor with it. So the reason it smells bad and it has these colors is because it's consisting of a bunch of dead tissue, cells, particularly white blood cells, bacteria, and fluid. Therefore, whenever you see this type of drainage, it's never normal, it's always abnormal. And as a nurse, what you wanna do is you want to report it and get a culture. And the reason we wanna culture it is because that will tell us what type of bacteria is colonizing this wound so we can get the patient the proper antibiotic treatment for it. Okay, so that wraps up this review over the different types of wound drainage. If you'd like to watch other videos in this series, you can access the link in the description below.